course, we have to talk about the big tune of the weekend, I'm assuming, that just passed. Uh, most of you would have been aware of. Um, Cardi B featuring, sorry, Cardi B featuring, not featuring, Cardi B featuring Megan Thee Stallion, and the song is called Bongos. And there was, a, I wouldn't say there's a lot of hype around it. I think there was a lot of hype around Cardi B essentially coming out and putting out music again because a lot of us hadn't heard from her for a while. And the feeling was that she had kind of been a bit shook of putting out music because so much time had passed, kind of got into her head, wasn't too confident about what she was making, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, in the in the end, we did get a date from her. We did get some music from her, some features here and there. But we also got this sort of like big budget feature with Megan Thee Stallion, which you would imagine is their attempt to make like WAP, you know, WAP number two or whatever, right? So... And, and you also imagine because of the level of investment in this music video and everything involved, I think I saw a clip of Cardi B saying that it costs anywhere between like two million or something to put this together, that this is definitely the, the single that she's hoping to put out there in the hope of, you know, stirring some interest in her up and coming album. There are also people out there who are more cynical who would say she's only doing this now because her fiercest rival, Nicki Minaj, has finally put out a date of when her pink tape is it pink tape or pink something i forgot what it's called pink friday 2 is meant to be coming out soon um the cover's fucking amazing it just got released actually i fucking love what it looks like um but obviously since she's put a date on it um put out some music and it's been very clear her intentions um now cardi b has kind of decided to follow suit because people sometimes feel like cardi b just goes around following every one of nikki's moves but it's safe to say that album invasion of privacy was a one-off like that essentially was her one hit one album wonder basically she hasn't been able to replicate that quality of that music people say it's because of the writers that she doesn't use anymore they've sort of changed um some people say she just never was that great myself i would probably say that and i just think she kind of captured the zeitgeist captured a moment in time was able to capitalize on it but i don't think there was anything in her or about her that would essentially make her a long-term artist of any shape or form which is i don't think is that is controversial to say but some people would I thought it was very clear from the moment Cardi B came onto the scene that she was about her money, right? There was this whole story of her being a stripper. She didn't want to strip anymore. She was like a disgruntled stripper, disgruntled sex worker. And she went to kind of transition out of that into just living a life of being like a socialite, a life of being um, an inf a kind of a really high level influencer and stuff. And obviously the music was a good way to do so. It kind of was able to kind of um, change how people perceived her. But you never got the feeling that she was an artist or that she cared about music in that way. Never. If anything, the only thing I was sort of imagining in her future was that she would might have made the transition into being more of a reggaeton artist. But she doesn't want to do that, clearly. She probably doesn't like the music as much. She probably wants to rap more. Who knows? But I thought the reggaeton thing would have came sooner. In the same way, 6 9 you know, he eventually had to do the reggaeton thing because he had no other options. Um, and he's probably still doing well off it now. But I always thought she'd go that route more so than sticking with the hip-hop and trying to become an actual rapper and artist and writing, you know, putting together songs and albums and stuff. It's just a long thing that if you're not really about it, and your motivation is just money, you're going to find it hard to get motivated to go into the studio and knock out verses and shit. It's just not going to come to you easily. And that's why we've not seen any work from her. And then when she does eventually put stuff out, it's so formulaic. It's the same old shit, right? It's just her talking about how rich she is, her talking about her pussy, her talking about her body, her talking about how many, you know, how, how many guys want to fuck her, how many girls want to be her, the haters. It's just the same old boring shit. And the video itself is a good representation of the fucking song because visually, in terms of looks, in terms of, I guess, cinematography, the video is pretty captivating. Like, it holds your attention. It's like two minutes and 57 seconds and you want to watch the entire thing, right? There's a lot of things going on in the background, a lot of crazy outfits, a lot of colour, you know, a lot of bending over and twerking and shit. It's an interesting video just to watch visually. But apart from all of that, as an actual song, the song is absolutely terrible. Like, it legitimately will make your ears bleed. It's the kind of thing that you hear and you want to run, you know, if, if, it's a, if, it, if it appears on your phone um, while you're in the shower, you want to immediately skip. You want to run over and sort of skip the track because it sounds terrible. Now, the odd thing about this track, I think similar to that track with um, Rihanna and Bryson Tiller that kind of came and went, I think it's going to sound terrible in your headphones when you're playing it by yourself. But I do also have a feeling that most likely if you were out in a party and this was mixing well or it dropped at the right time, you'd probably bop to it. That's a weird thing about modern day 
pop records at the moment. They sound terrible when you're playing them yourself at home, but then maybe when you out hear them out um, in situ or in an environment that you know you're you're kind of okay with, it kind of hits. But by choice, would you listen to it? I don't think so. Like, look how crazy her bum looks in this picture. Jesus Christus. But anyway, um, yeah, it's just a terrible, terrible, terrible video. It's the same old stuff. And if anything, it goes to show that these two artists need each other more than anything at this particular time. I think Cardi is kind of a bit flat, has been for a while. Some features have been pretty decent um, over the last 18 months. But overall, as an artist, you can kind of feel the motivation, the hunger, whatever, the idea of what to do isn't there. And then with Megan and Sally, and because of all the drama with Tory Lanez, and even before that, her music was stagnating for a bit anyway. And there's been a bunch of girls who have kind of taken over her or, you know, lapped her in a bit. I think of someone that kind of pops her mind straight away is Lato. That kind of style of rapping, she's kind of does it way better than her and puts together better songs. Um, and maybe it's a bit one more like a bit what a bit more liked by people, but I think that drama around Tory Lanez and the fact that a lot of people believe, myself included, that she put an innocent black man into prison, it's just really difficult to kind of listen to her music and take her seriously, because that stuff is just looming over her and it's never going to go anywhere. And I think it's the same for both parties. If Tory was out, I'm sure any music he put out, people would immediately talk about Megan. So it's just something she's never ever going to shake. You know, if Rih Rihanna and the Chris Brown thing, people still talk about it now. And Rihanna's fucking essentially married with fucking two kids, and she's completely moved on and had many boyfriends in between um, her and Chris Brown. But people still talk about that. You can imagine the fact that you know allegedly a guy shot a woman in her foot. That's going to be something that's going to live with them until the day they die. Then, and obviously way past that. So they're going to have to just have that over their heads. But I think the lack of clarification from her in terms of a clear the air conversation, an interview, whatever. It just kind of makes the music just don't hit the way it probably should do. The one thing that it does look amazing is Megan herself. She looks fucking incredible in the video. Um, she's clearly lost, um, I don't know, anywhere between 10 to 50 pounds. And I think I've said it plenty of times, especially to dudes, but it probably applies more to girls because of the dress sizes and women's proportions and shit. But most people would be most people's lives or most people's wardrobes will be improved if they lost between 10 to 50 pounds myself included as opposed to trying to buy a new wardrobe that fits your fat self or trying to fit your fat self into the fucking fashion clothes that you're into if you actually decided to wear if you actually decided to try and make the best of what you already have but drop between 10 to 50 pounds your wardrobe would open up to you do different options or open up to you in terms of other clothes to buy and it would just look better in clothes overall and Megan Stallion is a proof of that because, you know, whether she's chubby or skinny, she's always going to look good because she's an attractive girl. But when you get your body right, you know, things sit the way they need to sit and stuff. And clearly, um, things are looking good for her. Even in this little frame, you can see, you know, the chicks are swollen in, you can see the cheekbones popping. And she just looks, a, um, you know, a way tighter than, and better than she's, oh my God, you can actually see the, the little brown mark of her butthole, isn't it? Oh, am I bugging out? Can you see the little brown mark of her butthole if you zoom in a little bit? Oh, am I bugging? jesus christ these videos and that's something i've always wondered as well like what is it about certain rappers in hip-hop women especially who seem to have a tendency to only do this thing this whole like bending over showing your ass thing that like, the artistry just doesn't exist i'm not sure if that's just a plain matter of the metrics like this sort of stuff like just does well but it just does better compared to her just sitting in front of a microphone i'm not too sure but it's just a shame that all you get from certain artists is just let me bend over and show you how my bum moves let me gyrate and show you what it would look like if I was fucking you. Let me talk very explicitly about how good my pussy feels. Let me tell you girls how much better, how much better I am than you, like, or how much I'm better than you and stuff. I don't know. It's just, it just feels a bit boring after a while. But yeah, this United Colors of Benetton music video is fucking trash.